Hello and welcome to this session. My name is Shia Nafti. I'm an authorized trainer for Google. I travel around the world delivering training to Google's clients and partners. And in today's session, we're going to take a look at Config Connector. Config Connector is a capability that's available on the Google Cloud Platform that enables us to configure resources using Kubernetes manifests. So what we're going to do is get right in and explore how this works. In this demo, we're going to configure a number of Cloud SQL resources and the specific service or the specific database type that we're going to configure is MySQL. So let's go ahead and perform the first action that's required. The first action is to make sure that we have access to the relevant APIs that enable us to provision Cloud SQL instances, specifically MySQL. So we're going to enable two APIs. So let's go ahead and do that. Having enabled those APIs, we're going to proceed and create a Kubernetes cluster. Like I said before, um, Config Connector allows us to use Kubernetes manifest in order to create resources. So we need a cluster against which to apply those manifests. To create the cluster, we're going to start off by um, setting the project to make sure we're obviously working against the right project. Then we're going to set the zone, which is where our cluster will be created. So let's go ahead and do that. And having um, set the project as well as the zone, we can go ahead and run the Kubernetes or the G Cloud container cluster create command. As you can see from this command, we're creating the cluster in the US, in Iowa. That's US Central 1A. The machine type is N1 Standard 2. Um, the image we're using is the container optimized OS image. Disk size is 50 gigabytes. Um, we, we've enabled auto scaling. However, we're going to start off with just one node um, with the possibility of scaling up to two nodes. Um, the network we're using is a default network. We're enabling monitoring with Stackdriver and we're using cheap preemptible virtual machines. The version of the cluster we're going to deploy is the latest supported version that's available on the Google Cloud Platform. Now, this process takes about three minutes. So what I'm going to do is allow the process to go on in the background while we pause the video and we're going to reconvene once the cluster has been created. See you shortly. OK, welcome back. So the cluster has been created in the right zone. And you can see on the screen we have access to the API server endpoint. That's the master IP. And we also have confirmation of the machine type as well as the versions of the cluster that were installed. We can also confirm this on the um, console. So if I go to Kubernetes engine, clusters, and give this a few seconds to refresh, we should be able to see here, there it is, that's the cluster. And if we select the cluster, we should have access to the configuration of the cluster, as well as information on the nodes. And um, we requested just a one node cluster, and here you've got just a single node. Great, so we have our cluster. Let's carry on and proceed. The next thing we're gonna do is retrieve the credentials um, for the cluster, so we can obviously interact with it. So let's go ahead and do that. Having retrieved the credentials for the cluster, we also need to make sure that the user that's currently logged in has the right privileges in order to perform admin related activities. We do that by creating a cluster role binding and the role, the cluster role that we specify is the role of cluster admin. Okay, great. These are the prerequisites for creating the cluster. We're not going to dovetail into some specific configuration that's needed for Config Connector. And one of the things we need to do is to create a namespace that is named CNRM-System. So the namespace has to be called CNRM-System. So let's go ahead and create this namespace. And having created the namespace, there's another namespace that we must create. And this namespace has to be named based on the project ID. So let's go ahead and create the second namespace using the project ID. Right, so these are all prerequisites um, for Config Connector, right? And you're going to see, we're going to have a look at how these namespaces are used uh, later on in the demo. 
so that's it. So now we have our cluster. We've made sure that the required namespaces are configured. And step number three enables us to proceed and fulfill some additional prerequisites for config connector. And these prerequisites involved having to create a service account. And again, this service account must be called CNRM-system. So let's go ahead and create a service account. Once a service account is created, we need to grant a specific role to the service account. We're going to grant the role of project owner, enabling this service account to be able to provision resources within the current project. And having assigned the role, we're going to make sure that we're going to download the key for the service account, the JSON key. And we're going to make sure that this key is available within the Kubernetes cluster mm -hmm. as a Kubernetes secret. So let's go ahead and download the key first of all. And we're saving the key within the project folder on the local file system. And the next step is to create a secret, a generic secret. This secret has to be called gcp-key. And by the way, the key file that's, um, that's downloaded also has to be called key.json. Very important that you stick to these um, naming conventions. So let's go ahead and create the secret for the cluster. And let's move on to the next step, step number four. And in step number four, what we're going to do is download the bundle for config connector. Now this bundle is in a cloud storage bucket. So to download this, we're gonna change directory to the project directory, a specific location on the cloud shell file system. So we're in that directory now. So we're gonna use the um, gsutil command and to download the release bundle tar file for um, config connector. Now, once this is downloaded, we will have to extract it um, in order to be able to access the YAML files. So let's use the tar command to essentially uncompress and extract um, the contents of the bundle. Right, so there we are. And towards the end, you can see that we do have a couple of folders here. There's a folder that ends with workload-identity, and there's another that ends with gcp-identity. Now, there are two ways in which um, you can configure config connector. The method we're going to use will be based on gcp-identity, um, so that's what we're going to apply to the cluster. So let's go ahead and essentially retrieve the credentials for the cluster so we can and perform the required configuration um, tasks. So now we have the credentials for the cluster retrieved, and we're just gonna run kubectl apply, and we're gonna apply all of the configuration files in this directory install-bundle-gcp-identity. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, what you're gonna notice is that the number of service accounts, namespaces, service accounts, and cluster role bindings and cluster roles are created. And once that's done, and we have a few services and deployments as well, stateful sets, etc., you can see here a large number of custom resource definitions. Now, these custom resource definitions are um, essentially the configuration that enables us to be able to provision resources of many different types on um, the Google Cloud Platform using Config Connector. So you can see here there are resources related to target pools, to proxies, to DNSs, to identity access management, KMS, pops up a wide range of resources that can be configured using um, Config Connector. Now, in this specific demo, we're going to focus on Cloud SQL. And here you can see um, SQL database, SQL instance, SQL users. Those are the specific custom resources and custom resource definitions we're going to use. So we're going to create resources of that type or of these types in the current demo. So having applied the config connector resources or YAML files, let's get into the heart of the demo and begin configuring resources using config connector. And that's step number five. So in step number five, and the first thing we're gonna do is apply this YAML file, which you can see, which is being displayed on the screen. This is a specific object. So we're going to create an object of the kind SQL instance. This will enable us to essentially create a Cloud SQL instance on the Google Cloud Platform using Config Connector. So the kind is SQL instance. You see here the API version that's required. 
based on the custom resources that were applied or configured previously. The name of the instance will be the project name. So that's, um, I think there's a limit in terms of how long this can be, but um, you know, just to make the instance unique, I decided to use the project ID for the name of the instance. Then here we're specifying the version. The version is MySQL 5.7. We're configuring this within the US Central One region, and we're using the small, the, the micro uh, machine, right? The DBF1 micro machine type. So let's go ahead and uh, apply this YAML file. If you've ever configured Cloud SQL on the Google Cloud Platform, you'd know it actually takes a while. It takes about three minutes or so. So of course we need to wait um, for this process to complete, but there are a number of things we can do. So first of all, let's have a look at what's currently configured. So we're gonna um, run the kubectl command, minus minus namespace, the project um, ID. So that's the namespace where this resource is um, will be created. So we're gonna get SQL instances um, within this namespace. So let's go ahead and run this. So you can see, that we do have a SQL instance, which is named as the project ID, and the age is 38 seconds. So this instance is still in the process of being created. The other thing we could do is we could actually display the configuration of this instance or describe it, and we should get back some information on the current status. Like I said, it takes a while for this to be created, so I don't expect that this would be up and running yet. But let's have let's try and describe the configuration and see where we're at. So here you've got um, information, the name, the namespace, right? Some annotations, and right at the bottom here we've got the status. So the type events rather is currently updating the age. So it was created about seventy two seconds ago, and the messages update in progress. Hopefully, if we go to the console, so let's navigate to the console, we should be able to see a Cloud SQL instance. So let's go to Cloud SQL. And with any luck, it should be, yes, so there we are. So now you can see the Cloud SQL instance being created. A public IP address has been assigned to it. Um, you've got the instance connection name as well there. Right, so everything looks good. So let's allow time for this um, instance to be created. So I'm gonna pause the video for a few minutes to allow this process to complete. And we're gonna reconvene once, it's, um, once the instance is up and running. Okay, welcome back. This didn't take very long. Now we have the instance created. I can go ahead and click on this instance. And um, there we go, right? So everything is configured as we expect, and we can view the connections. Currently, there are no users except some of the default user, which is essentially MySQL-system. So we're gonna have to take care of that later. Databases, there are some system databases, but no user database. So why don't we go ahead and create a user and a database to um, and complete the process. So everything looks good as far as the um, instance is concerned. So let's go back to our console here. So having created the instance, what we're now gonna do is, in fact, before we create the um, user, we obviously need to set a password for the user. So the secret is created. Um, of course, I can do what I did previously and get secrets just to make sure everything was created in the right namespace, right? So there we have, there we go. We have here the secret. I can also describe the secret to make sure everything was created properly. And there we go. So we have a secret which will essentially serve as the password for the Cloud SQL user. So let's go on to the next step and create the Cloud SQL um, user. So we're creating an object of the kind SQL user. The name is cfgcon-sql user. 
the reference so here we have an instance reference so this user will be created in the instance that we created previously remember that the instance was actually called project id right so that's why we have the reference name as the project id the host um, is basically a percent sign which means we can essentially connect from any location and here we have a reference to the secret for the password. So let's go ahead and create this user cfgcon-sql user. So here we've created the user. I can confirm that the user was created by getting the SQL users in the current namespace. And you can see the right user is returned age 10 seconds ago. So created roughly 10 seconds ago. Let's describe this user. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. And you can see that the creation of the user is almost instance, right? So the resource is up to date. Of course, we can go back to our console. And if we select users here, we should be able to see this new user. So there it is, right? So that's the user. And the user is available or this user can be used to access resources from the database resources from any host. So great. So we have our instance. We'll have um, a user with a password. The next thing we're going to do is create a database. So let's go ahead and do that. So there is an object of the kind SQL database. Um, the name of the database will be cfgcon-sql database. One of the things we can do, and you can see an example here, is we can apply or assign labels um, to resources as with any Kubernetes resource. And in this example, we've assigned a label, label one, and this label has a value which essentially identifies the cost center against which the resource is consumed by this database will be, will be charged. So again, this highlights one of the benefits of um, using config um, config connector so let's go ahead and create the database um, you can see here we're specifying the character set collation so number of um, database configuration um, values that you can specify um, within the within the kubernetes manifest so let's go ahead and apply this so here we have um, the database created. Once more, I can confirm that the database indeed was created in the required namespace. So yes, there we go, created 10 seconds ago. Let's describe um, the database, just try and see if the database is ready. So go ahead and do kubectl describe, and you can see the resource is up to date. So of course, if I went back to the console, and select a database. You can see here we have a database. Okay. So with that said, let's go here. So that there it is, right? So you've seen how easy it is to um, configure resources using config connector. Why is this so cool? This is so cool because we have now the possibility of treating the configuration of any resource on the Google Cloud Platform as code. So we can uh, essentially have YAML files within a Git repository, and we can drive the configuration of all of our resources from that Git repository using custom build pipelines. So the possibilities are endless, and this provides a very powerful addition, right, to the capabilities that are already available on the Google Cloud Platform. Thanks for watching this video and hope you join us um, in a subsequent video. Have a nice day.